welcome to another guide so today we're going to go around the lake it's a windy one and we're starting off at the uh, little sort of car park just down from the bottom of the Howrahs okay so uh, you can get parked up on here if you're lucky um, this is uh, the road just leading out of um, Keswick by the uh, past the old school past the school um, and it takes you over the suspension bridge into porting scale okay so coming to the end of this road when you get to porting scale you want to make a left that's the chalet cafe if you want to stop for a brew so this is where the path stops here if you pop over to the right hand side the path um, picks up on the other side okay so we're on the right hand side of the road now follow this path uh, when this path ends pop back over to the left hand side where the path picks up take that path all the way to Nicolen Marine okay when you get to the sign that says Nicolen Marine launches take a left cut through here and go down towards the lake it might feel like you're uh, coming to a dead end but uh, as you come to the end you hit the lake and then you take a right okay when you get to here you're going to be going up through here to your right hand side just uh, to the right of this gate okay so continue on this path now through the woods until you get to Lingham and uh, basically just cross there and uh, keep going okay so when you come to Lingham Estate if you make your way through this little gate on the right hand side here and then carry on going okay so you make your way round the side here this footpath this is where they do the uh, alpaca walks Just show you some information of the alpacas if you want to meet and greet an alpaca. You see one having a pee. Okay, so carry on up this footpath uh, and then this will take you to the foot of stair, um, uh, which will be taking a left along the road. Okay, so we've got a nice view of cat bells up there. Uh, go across here to the right, we've just got Causey Pike rolling end and then Causey Pike over to the right. So just continue through here, um, it's a nice little area this, quite a picturesque little field. So continue on right through to the other side. Okay so when you get to this gate, uh, go through and follow the road to the left. Okay, so you follow this road round until you see a gate on the left hand side. This is going up towards Hawes End. If you're going up to Cat Bells, take a right up here. This is the gate we go through. You want to just head on through here and then follow the path down to another gate. From now on, will be uh, quite close to the lake okay we're just heading down to uh, towards the lake now gone through one gate so we're just getting through another gate and then we'll go down to the jetty uh, the jetty um, can actually be you can actually get dropped off there um, by the boats that circumnavigate the um, the lake okay so this is the gate to go through and it sort of skirts to the right hand side and then when you get through to the lake uh, go through the gate on the right sometimes this gets quite wet down here um, so there are some sort of stepping stones I say sort of stepping stones I think they've just been chucked here but um, you can get through when it's a bit wet
if you want a little quick round route you can go off to the left here and it basically goes up round this to the lake comes back around and then meets uh, where them sort of trees are and it kind of sort of traverses the lake there okay so you can see where this path comes along so if you took that path off to the left it skirts around and just adds a little uh, bit extra onto the walk there's the jetty where the launch comes um, you can pick that up one goes clockwise one goes anti-clockwise um, we'll be going through this gate on the right hand side there is a timetable there if you uh, ever so wish to look at if you're getting tired you can go back okay so uh, basically we're on this path now um, all, all the way to the bottom end of the lake now you're getting some nice views of the lake at the moment it's quite windy um, but still quite nice at least it's dry for now you just sort of see Waller Crag on the left hand side and just on, over to the right up there is um, Bleaberry Fell. Just come at, we're just coming up to the um, these hands look like they've been wedged under a tree. Now these hands are the um, entrust that have been put here by the National Trust to celebrate a um, hundred years of uh, of the National Trust. Now these have moved three times. So basically the water's come up because the wood have floated. They've actually broken in two as well. Now these um, were over there at some point, but they actually started life at that point over there. And there is still a plaque there. So there's the plaque. This is the area where the hands used to sit. And over time, They've moved over that way and up and right over there and what's happened is that as it's flooded the lakes have come up the lakes pretty high at the moment but uh, when there was some significant flooding they just pulled them off their uh, however they were held down with or if it was just the weight of them and dropped them over here and just recently they've floated up and moved over here and broke into two. Okay, so we're carrying on along here. Again, it's just the lakeshore path. Uh, at this point, we're about halfway down the lake. Obviously, not halfway around the walk, but we're about halfway down the lake. Kind of looking towards. Um, in the distance over here uh, you've got Lador Hotel it's quite prominent at night um, it just sort of lights up you can see it quite well now it's getting quite windy now so um, hopefully you can hear me but we just keep on this lakeshore path now until we get down to the bottom end okay so um, you come past here now this jetty here is the last one uh, before you get to the other side of the lake so if you are feeling tired and the and the uh, boats are running then uh, this will be one for you you'll know if the boats are running by now because uh, you would have seen them going up and down the lake they've put a, uh, a bench here now as well and these um, little benches have got like a little wheelchair access thing it's quite good actually There you go. Right, just as you're coming out of these trees here, there's a nice little uh, place here to sit down by the lake if it's warm enough and have a picnic. And the sun's come out. This beachy area here in summer is quite a nice little sun trap. As you can see, it's almost like it's quarried. Here we go up 
the way. There we go. Yeah, so you can kind of see there. You get some nice views of the lake as well, although a bit hazy today. So we're just going to carry on round now, follow this footpath and uh, until you get to a gate. The sun's come out and the wind's died down. Look at this little, uh, little bay. Look at this little bay behind me. This is where I was just before. And then you've got this lovely bay. Um, so it's a great place to stop and have a picnic or whatever. Um, even this time of year it's quite nice. So uh, just going across a little stream now. This cottage uh, has uh, just recently been bought and he did have plans to renovate, almost knock the whole thing down and renovate. But uh, I think the plans got knocked on the head because uh, of where it is. And um, to be honest, I'm quite glad they did. It does look nice. Um, wouldn't you want just a view like that? Okay, so past the uh, teddy bear shed and we'll go through this gate here and want to be going down this road and then taking a, it's straight ahead but taking a right. Left takes you into a private house there. This wood here on your right hand side is uh, Rupert's wood. Obviously uh, guy called Rupert used to have it. This tree on the left hand side here used to have loads of string hanging off it and it used to have like hanging dolls and all sorts of weird stuff but I never knew why. Okay just to the right there you've got Abbot's Bay. So you want to be heading off up here and when you get to the gate Take a left just on the other side of the gate. Okay, just up here where this gravel is, you want to be taking a left. You want to follow this footpath now and uh, you've got a couple of uh, bridges to cross. Just keep the lake on the left hand side and you should be doing fine. I'm going to leave this one as a little bit of a secret. But if you're feeling adventurous, you can come and try and find it. There's a little bench here with an awesome view. Secret little bay. This is a nice little place, semi secluded, but fully exposed. Okay, we're back on the path now going to cross these uh, little bridges and if you uh, keep on here until you get a gate get to a gate <clears throat> so 
So don't what it's quite an accessible uh, lake. Um, as you can see, the footpaths around here are quite good for um, wheelchairs, although off-road wheelchairs would be preferred, or buggies even. Um, and uh, yeah, so this walk is about 10 miles um, to loop right round. Okay, so you just come through the gate and then come up and then follow the path over here and then you take kind of a left, but follow the main path round. Okay, so as you come up over here and you're looking down to the jaws of Borrowdale, Castle Crag sits in the middle and then you've got some mountains to the left and right, which I can't remember. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you do get some nice views here, especially if the sun's in the right direction. Okay, so just continue following this and then you get to the, uh, what's locally known as the duck boards. Okay, these are the duck boards. I've been down for some quite quite some time, but I think just recently they've uh, endured, endured a bit of bad weather. Now, all this is um, like nature reserve protected, so you don't really want to go walking on it. And to be honest, you don't want to because it's that boggy and horrible. Um, you, you'll probably never get back. Okay, so we're coming up to a bridge now. This is locally known as Chinese Bridge. No idea why it's called Chinese Bridge. Um, but there you go. Maybe it used to look like a Chinese bridge. If you look off to the left there, you've seen that uh, sort of brownie uh, slab area. In the rock climbing community, that's called brown slabs. And you can often see climbers and hear them shouting to each other. Okay, so we're coming to the uh, busy side of the lake. This is the lake that's got the uh, road up the side of it. Um, now you do have to walk along this road on a couple occasions and it is quite a busy road. So um, if you do have dogs or anything, just make sure they are on lead. Um, in fact, the first part you come to at this gate, we'll be making a left and uh, we'll be on the road there for a good uh, 300 meters and it does get quite tight in some places. There's no um, footpath. There's a bit of footpath to begin with, but then the footpath disappears. So you just have to be wary with that. Okay, so we're just on the road here and this is where the path actually stops. And uh, we're on the road now for a good uh, 200 meters. As you can see, it gets pretty tight and quite busy as well. The guests from the uh, hotel park in the car park on the left there. Okay, so even though the common thing is to go uh, on the right hand side to follow uh, the road, I would recommend at this point keeping on the left hand side just because people could be waiting on their bus there. And when you get over the bridge, go over onto the right hand side and pick up the path um, that's on the right that's in the woods okay on your right hand side here if you uh, pick up this path here you'll see the signpost here around the lake walk and just carry on follow the wall um, and then it pulls away from the wall a little bit but just keep on this path until you get uh, to the gap in the wall by the car park okay once you get to the uh, Kettlewell car park sign you want to be crossing the road here looking left and right and all that you can stop in Kettlewell if you really want or you can go over the bridge here okay as you're following this path uh, along the lake shore Here's a little bit of a drop on the left hand side there, so uh, mind how you go. 
when you get to the end of here you want to be taking a left following the path around now if the lake's up high you have to go onto the right and then back into onto the road again there's no footpaths um, for this section um, so just mind how you go on that road because it gets quite tight and blind but for now we're going to go round by the lake okay so we've just walked along the shore there there is a bridge and a, a stream that you got to cross now um, and then we're just going to follow this shoreline all the way uh, now if the lake is up high we'll have to take the um, the path that's a bit further up but for now we're just going to try and stick by the shore and uh, walk along the side there okay we're uh, coming around to the last jetty and I don't think they'll be using this today looks like the ducks are using it instead that's pretty broken okay so we're gonna risk walking along here like I say there is a slightly higher path but we're gonna try and take the shoreline and see how far we get there is a point where it does actually get quite high um, but we might be able to get round okay so I've just made my way up from the shore there it was just getting a bit dodgy I think uh, there's a bit of a point of no return and it's um, quite tight up against the the um, the rocks with the water and sod's law it's the last bit before you um, get round to the next shore uh, if you come in the other way you can easily see it but this one you have to uh, you have to backtrack some fair ways before you can get back on this path okay that's down to the shore what I would advise um, to come up here to the road first before you go back down and the route down here this is a bit technical so I'll show you the route the easiest route down is along here and then you follow this path back down and along and then that eventually takes you to the shoreline and then you're back on the shoreline okay so we're now down by the shore it's looking lovely tonight the sun's just setting We're just about to set on the mountain there over the right over the summit of cat bells you probably can't see it okay so you're just following this path now on the shore all the way back to Keswick now through a few gates but just keeping the uh, lake to the left hand side it'll start getting busy now with people walking from Keswick a lot of people do out and backs okay the uh, path splits here and what we want to be doing is taking a left hugging the lake shore and just continue on round okay so go up through the woods now the woods will turn to right there is a viewpoint off to your left there um, as time's running tight for me I'm going to continue on okay uh, so this bit here continue on through the gate or over the cattle grid whatever you're comfortable with keep on this road now um, until you come to a footpath that's going left take that footpath and then on towards uh, Keswick okay this is the path here it says one and a half miles into Keswick 40 minutes I'm going to try and do it in uh, less than that okay as we're coming across here now the path splits off into uh, three 
There's one that takes you way across there to the back of the woods, one that takes you across past the um, lake, and the other one is the same place but a bit higher. Good for when it's flooding. Okay, I'm going to take the higher route. I think I'll get some nicer views of the lake. When I say higher route, it's uh, not much higher, but it's um, still a level walk. But I think we're going to get some nice pictures. Okay, so you're coming into Keswick now. There's Friars Crag over the left hand side. If you took the lower route, you'd be coming through the gate there. As we took the higher route, we'll be going through the gate there. They both come up into the same path. And then you'll be at the um, Keswick launches. And then basically just take a right when you get through this gate and follow it into town. Okay, so uh, just follow this path now until you get to the um, the theatre. You'll know where you're at because you you can see the boats now. Looks like these jetties have taken a hammer in. There's another one there broken and uh, they're working on the one at the end there. Okay, resorted to the iPhone now because uh, my battery's gone. So if you want to go into town, take this road. Um, I'm going to be taking the quickest route back to uh, where we started. So if we take a left through here and follow the path around. Okay, so just follow this path uh, all the way through until you get to another gate and then go straight, straight down the road towards uh, the rugby club. Okay, this is the probably the only bit of town we have to come through now. Uh, we're just sort of nipping in and nipping back out before we get uh, back to the uh, parking place. So you want to be walking up this road here. Um, keep going on this road till you get a car past the car park and a, um, a bike shop called Eventures, and take a left down there. Okay, so we're here now. So you want to take a left down this road and come down to the right by that bush. Okay, just continue on down, down the road until you see a footpath on your right and then take the footpath. Okay, it feels like you're coming onto a housing estate, but we'll be taking a right just at this point here. Okay. Now all you need to do now is follow this footpath until you get uh, it comes out at the end of the road. Okay, so we're just going to go over the bridge now and then take a left. Okay, just before Premier Inn, you want to take a left down here. This is known as the Howrahs, and this is your final stretch back to where we started. Okay, this is the final stretch and you just basically go all the way down here until you get to where them cars are. So you just follow this path. So you just follow this path all the way down. You're about a quarter of a mile away now. It's a nice way to end the walk here because you get some nice views and uh, you can sort of see rolling end Causey Pike, Barra Fell out to side. Um, that's Grisdale Pike in the background there and then you've got uh, Wintlatter over there. Okay so that's been uh, walk around Derwent Water. Um, roughly about 10 miles and uh, quite an easy walk albeit long rough in parts it's, um, it's alright. We'll see you in the next one.